the Israeli war cabinet has decided that there will be a military response to the Iranian attack over the weekend. Iran fired more than 330 missiles and drones at Israel. Almost all of them were intercepted, thanks partly to an RAF fighter jets that were shooting some of them down. This has led to international leaders calling for a de-escalation of tensions in the region amid fears of an all-out war between Israel and Iran. Here's what the head of the UN had to say during a meeting, an emergency meeting of the Security Council last night. The Middle East is on the brink. The people of the region are confronting a real danger of a devastating full-scale conflict. Now is the time to defuse and de-escalate. Now is the time for maximum restraint. Well, joining us now is former NATO commander Chris Parry. Good morning, Chris. Now, will we see Israel uh, or their allies intervening any time soon? Well, I don't think so. Um, I think uh, as a result of this attack, the strategic initiative has passed to uh, Israel. And what they can do now is uh, basically hold Iran at risk. Uh, Any time that uh, Iran steps out of line, Israel can say, well, actually, this is our retaliation. Um, the fact of life is, um, we've heard a lot of commentators, including the one you just had on, saying, oh, this is just performative. But when you launch uh, over 330 drones, ballistic and cruise missiles against a country, that is not performative. Uh, it, they were all designed to hit something. The fact they were brought down uh, is almost irrelevant. Uh, the intention was to kill uh, and also attack uh, lots of urban areas as well. Uh, so it's a pretty, pretty uh, heavy attack, even though it didn't succeed. So, as I said, you know, Israel now has sympathy from the international community. It can get on with what it wants to do in Gaza and it can hold uh, Iran at risk. But, Chris, I, I totally appreciate what you're saying about, you know, obviously 300 missiles and drones coming towards urban areas. It's extremely terrifying. But it would surely have been done in the knowledge that the majority of those would have been shot down. So Iran perhaps using that as an excuse to say, well, we were only attacking Israel within the means that we knew that they could defend themselves. I'm not excusing it but no, 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 under no, any I, circumstances, but, but realistically, yeah. they would have believed that the Iron Dome would have stopped those missiles. So it was kind of a, a gesture. This is, I think, why some people are, are naming it. No, no, gesture. No, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to say to you, it's incredibly difficult what Israel did. It's not just the Iron Dome. It's involved uh, aircraft. It's vo involved exo-atmospheric -atm action. And to coordinate all that is incredibly difficult. If we had uh, 330 uh, of those uh, missiles launched against the UK, I doubt if we could bring down more than 10 percent of them. Um, Chris, I, I, welcome to the show, mate. Always great to have you on. I absolutely get where Nicola's coming from. The point is, in all of this, if we can step away from the horror of that attack, the horror of October the 7th, the humanitarian situation in Gaza, there's a massive political game brewing here, isn't it? We've read yep. that Netanyahu is becoming increasingly unpopular with Israeli people. This will solidify his position by a million percent because they have launched weapons inside Israel. That then gives him carte blanche to do whatever. You've got Biden. You look at Biden, you think, this is a man who's so old he doesn't even know his name. Suddenly, he's in a position where America needs to be strong. Is this going to help him against Trump, who's going to turn up in court this week? Or the Democratic Party, you can't make their minds up how to tie their own shoelaces. Are they going to hinder him and make it difficult? I think there's so much going on here. And when people say, and you've said it to me on this show, and we've both been accused of warmongering, that axis of China and Iran and, and, and Russia... The world is is undoubtedly on a precipice. And all the people who think... I mean, what was that bloke from the... You know, I'm not very keen on NATO or the United Nations. Sorry, we'll probably disagree with that. Oh, it needs to be brought down. How? You've got mad people work. You know, Putin isn't going to listen to you. The people in Iran aren't going to listen to you. I think we have every reason to be concerned, don't you, Chris? Well, if you want peace, you prepare for war. Uh, yeah. And I'm afraid to say the Israelis have said this for decades. If you show yourself to be weak, it's a provocation uh, to your opponent. And that's the situation we're in right now. But the really interesting thing about this is that it's not just about Netanyahu. Uh, if you ask any potential Israeli leader right now what their solution to Gaza is, it's exactly the same. Benny Gantz, who, who's uh, touted as a sort of possible alternative, he said already, you know, I wouldn't do it any different. 
Uh, and so I would be very wary of thinking that Netanyahu uh, is as unpopular in the, uh, right now in this particular situation as people think. No, what uh, I'm trying to say to you is if there have been voices of discontent, this will be swept away Correct. because a foreign power has launched weapons in... It doesn't matter whether it's a hole in the ground or, or complete devastation. Yeah. That is an act of war, isn't it? Oh, quite clearly. And uh, and the fact of life is this is the first time that Iran has not used its proxies. Yeah. Now, let me just put that in some sort of perspective here, Jeremy. Iran has had to do this because I think its proxies are saying, look, you know, we're taking on Israel, you know, whether it's the Houthis, it's Hezbollah uh, or Hamas. And they're saying we're not getting much support from you, are we? And so Iran has almost been forced to do this to show that actually it's got some teeth. But I'll tell you, Iran is not ready to take on Israel right now um, no. until they get a nuclear device at some stage in 2025, 20, 26. And I think there's real delays in that, which is why they're panicking a bit. Uh, you're not going to see Iran take on Israel uh, in, a, in a serious basis. And what about the future of the UK's involvement, Chris? Would it be the case that Parliament would vote on whether or not to get further involved? Or is this something that basically Rishi Sunak could decide on overnight, depending on the situation? We've only ever voted twice uh, in Parliament uh, to get involved in a conflict. This is an executive decision. Uh, if you think about it the other night, there was no time to recall Parliament to get our RAF people involved to actually help Israel here. Um, and it's not just a question of helping our NATO allies. We would have helped other countries like Jordan, Oman, Australia, uh, if they'd had this scale of threat. Um, as Jeremy said, you know, we're in a a fairly existential crisis right now between the autocracies of the world uh, and the democracies. And unless we stand up for the democracies, we're going to see progressively, uh, we're going to get more coerced, we're going to find our trade that is going to get squeezed, and our lives are going to be changed forever. Uh, and Chris, what do you think Rishi Sunak would have been advising Benjamin Netanyahu at the moment? It must be a strained relationship considering mm. what's been going on over the past few weeks, including Biden. Um, what advice do you think he would be giving? What kind of pressure will he be putting on Netanyahu to try and de-escalate the situation? Well, it's interesting. I mean, because there are things you say for an internal audience here in the UK and there are things you say externally. Uh, I think uh, the Prime Minister, as I would say, uh, I would say to ben Benjamin Netanyahu, look, it's your business, uh, but you live with the consequences of your policy decisions and what you do. We appreciate you've got to get Gaza sorted out. Uh, I know, as the Prime Minister, because you've told me, you're trying to eradicate Hamas while uh, reducing civilian casualties. Yep, we can go along with that. Uh, but obviously, you've got to understand what the optics look like when people are getting killed uh, as collateral damage. Meanwhile, uh, you and I, we both know the threat from Iran. Uh, we both know that uh, Iran itself is teetering on the edge because people don't want the sort of government they're being uh, governed by in Iran at the moment. We know the Iran Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps is at the heart of this. Uh, we will join you in opposing this international terrorism uh, and aggression. I, I mean, I, the, when I started this, I said to you that I think it's a very interesting time in terms of how Netanyahu's uh, seen now by the Israeli people because there's been weapons dropped inside his country, Putin as well. I think it's a very interesting time for the Allies because there must be fear. There's been, you know, a week ago we were sat on this show hearing people across Europe say, come on, why are we arming Israel? Come on, this is outrageous. You won't hear of that now. Suddenly, rightly, you know, or wrongly, whatever, we are obviously going to support Israel. But the truth of the matter is, I wonder how many of the Western Allies leaders are thinking, oh, God, this is legitimising still further what Netanyahu's been doing. I think there's a lot going on here, and a lot of people will use this situation for their own ends. But undoubtedly, you know, and, and, I, and I salute you for this, because people used to poo-poo you. We are in a really precarious position, and if people don't understand that, they are missing the damn point. I mean, Iran is not going to go away. Whether it's face-saving to show off in terms of Hamas, I think you're right about the nuclear thing. My wife said to me yesterday, we live on the coast, do you honestly think that bringing a child into a world like this right now is the right thing to do? We've just had a baby. We, if you look around, that's not being ridiculous, that's being honest, well, Chris, you, isn't you it? You and me both, Jeremy. I know, and Nick, <laughs> but you do suddenly think that, and you go, hold on, what is happening? But you have to face it out, and you have to get on with it. Chris, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure. Uh, NATO Commander Chris Parry on talk today.